This mutation is called Wheel of Misfortune and it's played on Oblivion Express. We basically have one mutator active, which is Chaos Studios, but let us have a look at the masteries and we'll talk about how this mutator works in just a little bit. Stepman, 3 points into the Gary cooldown mastery, 3 points into the Set Zone bonus mastery, and 3 points into the Morph Evolution Rate mastery. Carax has gone for 3 points into the Structure HP, 3 points into the Repair Beam, and 30 points into the Chrono Boost Mastery. Stetman playing the Oil Baron Prestige, which is B3, and we have Carax who's playing the Architect of War. Two Meme Lords over here, those of you who know and Caligon know that he is a Mutation Memer. Eveling, on the other hand, is a Prestige Memer. He likes to torment me when he plays, and he keeps playing P2 Warzoon and P3 Abathur just to make me suffer. But let us talk about this mutator, the Chaos Studios mutator, probably the community's least favorite mutation that is available, and basically what this does is it cycles mutators throughout the course of the game every 90 seconds. So one mutator will be disabled, then you have 30 seconds of like free time, and then you will get another mutator that will cycle in at random, so you can get a lot of nasty things, and planning in advance for the mutations that you're going to be facing is really, really important, and being aware about what mutators can roll around, and obviously dealing with those mutators as they run through, because it's very, very difficult to plan for every single mutator that you can go up against. So the three starting mutators that we have are Avenger, Pure Fire Beam, and Transmutation. So I think pretty good set to start, like, I mean, they're not particularly impactful, the ones that, this can, this mutation can get really difficult if you get environmentally damaging mutators at the start, so say you get slim pickings or microtransactions, in the early game those things can really kind of sting, so we have an overlord over here that's just drawing this pure fire beam away, which is really nice, and you can see here what we have is the pure fire beam trapping mechanism. So this was, I had recommended this for the previous mutation, which was the one the minor evacuation with the cloaked pure fire beam, but you can see here what has happened is there's an overlord that is put in patrol, and because this overlord is in patrol, this pure fire beam is aggroed to the overlord, and the pure fire beam will continue to chase the overlord indefinitely until units come around here. So if you do something like this, you can trap the pure fire beam. Now obviously you do not want to trap the pure fire beam on this mission in this particular spot, because obviously you want to try and deal with the trains, but just to give you an idea on like how you can do it, but this pure fire beam will despawn at some point, so it's not too big of an issue right now. You can see Avenger playing a little bit of a role in the attack wave, but nothing really too much they cannot handle, and the enemy composition is the Ravaging Infestation composition, which is the Ground Zerg composition, which is actually kind of nice. So we have Transmutation cycling out, and we have Scorched Earth, which is actually a really nice meter to deal with, reasonably simple, not particularly difficult to to handle and you know especially with Super Gary being a floating unit, a flying unit, it's not really too bad. Queen being a little bit annoying over here but Super Gary is using their shield overcharge or their st their satellite overcharge to satellite overload to keep Super Gary alive and as you can see these roaches really unable to do anything against Super Gary right now and remember that Super Gary is not the uber Super Gary which is what you get from P2. This is the Oil Baron Prestige, so this is the one which gives the best oil stacks to the units over here. And what do we have in production? Really nothing much for Statman, we just have the Spear of Dune upgrades coming out for... for Karax here. So that'll be actually kind of nice. One thing to know that we... <laughs> that Spike Crawler. <laughs> just look at that Spike Crawler go. But yes, that is something you can do if you want to really meme with the spine crawlers. You can actually do this. You can see the energizer actually providing a lot of damage from the spine crawlers there. But yes, that is definitely something you can do. Remember that the spine crawlers can get the energizer buffs, but they also get the chrono wave buff from the P1 Karaks here. So that is how that is working. If anyone is kind of curious about it, we have the next level sphere view upgrades coming out as well. So we had a cycle mutator, so that was the pure fire beam that has gone away, and this overlord now seems looks to be very very silly right now, just running around in circles. But we have darkness that has been activated here. And our darkness, as I said, not really again, not really too difficult of a mutator to deal with. Remember that the darkness just cloaks everything around the map and it hides your, it doesn't cloak the map, but it hides the mini-map, basically, unless you have vision. So 
you know, both these players are extremely experienced players and you know, they don't need they really don't need ping markers on the minimap to know where things are. Unfortunately, this one energizer may end up getting killed off. There was a last minute attempt to try and save this, but unfortunately, a little bit too late. And Avenger here also being a little bit annoying, but again, these roaches are going to get wiped out by Super Gary. So now we have this next train that will be spawning. Train will be spawning on the southern side here, and we have some more spine crawlers coming up for Stedman. And do we have Chrono Wave available? We do not have Chrono Wave available, so that is somewhat unfortunate, but Stepman is going to go for full Spine Crawlers there. It does look like Garax is going to be interested in just supporting his ally, and now we have a little bit of a problem. We have Propagators that has cycled in, and this is somewhat problematic because Darkness is available. And you know what I was saying about earlier is like these are really experienced players, they really do need ping markers on the minimap. Well, when it comes to Propagators, you kind of want to have ping markers on the minimap because you do not know where they're coming from. And I think they are lucky in the sense that they are lucky in the sense that there's no speed freaks because if there were speed freaks on this map, I think it would have been game over with speed freaks, Propagators, Darkness, but. Uh, yeah, you can see that there are a few propagators here that are causing a few problems for Karax, and eventually Super Gary is going to jump in, draw a little bit of aggro, and try and take these things out. Not before there's going to be another bit of propagation over here. Propagation being a little bit annoying there, and they are actually going to maybe like actually hit that. Okay, so there we go. That is actually that does end up saving it, and these guys are going to take out this train, which is also really nice. But they are not out of the woods yet. Propagators is still going to be rolling around. I think as soon as darkness rolls out, it's not. It won't be too bad. But again, you can see another set of propagators over here. These propagators will. Okay, there is a very nice lift off here. And he's just going to uproot these spine crawlers and just run away. But these propagators are going to start taking out Stetman's satellites. And again, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Karax needs to try and actually snipe these things out. Because they are just going to start wrecking through Stetman's satellites. And now we have Void Rifts that is active. So, so yeah, Scorched Earth has been cycled out. And now we have Void Rifts in. And again, Void Rifts are really ridiculously nasty. And with Darkness, is it just... It is just so difficult to deal with because ping markers are not visible on the day map. It just makes things so, so nasty. This one energizer tries to get out of there, unfortunately, does end up getting picked off. These spine crawlers are going to be able to hold this attack wave, and very luckily here for Setman, he now knows where this propagator is. So he's going to be able to draw aggro on this propagator. A few more shots as well from the Spear of Doom to try and take this propagator out. Very, very nicely done. Again, we have some Egorbs being used here as well to try and take out the rest of these roaches. Remember, the adventure is no longer active, so these roaches are now a lot squishier than they would normally expect it to be. Darkness has now been cycled out, which is really convenient. Now these players are going to be able to see their propagators. They're going to be able to see where these Void Rifts are going to be spawning. And actually, I think Void Rifts might... Is it Void Rifts that's bugged? I don't... Maybe it's not Void Rifts. I think it's aggressive deployment that's bugged with uh, Wheel of Misfortune, which is where, like, you actually did not end up spawning at all. But we have now a very nice time warp mutator that is active, so this is just a little bit of a break for these players just to help them, you know, catch their breath before the next bit of madness begins. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of madness here. Karax has not used his... his... His Chrono Wave ability yet, so I think he wants to try and save this for the next set of trains, which is the double train wave here. There's another Propagator coming in from the southern side, and we have two sets of Void Rifts over here that need to be dealt with. And one thing Karax can do is he can actually send a few Observers around the map to try and deal with this. But Super Gary is going to be working his way over here. He's going to start taking out these Void Rifts, and what do we have next? Propagators will be despawning at some point, so yeah. Seven asking Karax to try and snipe out some of these structures but there are a few propagators here that need to be dealt with. There's an attack wave coming in on the northern side as well, so Gary needs to try and deal with this. We have some random banshees also attacking Karax's structures. This is going to be a completely hectic game right now. Karax is... he's doing okay, so we have propagators out. Outbreak in, not a particularly great mutator, but Karax does have adequate defenses on the high ground here, so he should be able to have absolutely no issues dealing with this. Unfortunately, Kaidar and Monolith are not detectors, and these lurkers are going to be a bit of an issue, but the lurkers will actually uproot if those flying crawlers were not actually in moving down the ramp there. 
and yeah those spine crawlers will i think that one spine crawler is still drawing aggro spine crawlers will sit down here now and they will start to deal with a little bit with this attack but they are gonna get picked off here and now we have chrono wave being used here spine crawlers i think the chrono wave was a little bit early i think it was a bit of a premature chrono wave here this entire mass of attack wave needs to be dealt with by Karak's forces over here super gary just trying to deal with these void drifts. you gotta close these void drifts as quickly as possible void drifts is the next mutator that is scheduled for cycling out of this mutator set so note that the mutator at the top is the one that disappears all the time and now this these spine crawlers are going to be trying to hold off against Amon's forces we have pure fire beam that's getting used here pure fire beam really good ability to deal with these really chunky attack waves but there is another massive escort wave over here so void rifts has cycled out there is one la one last remaining void rift here and now we have void reanimators active what is this mutator said and Calagon, when he submitted this replay file to me he was very excited for this replay file and i can see why it's a very very nice spicy delicious set of mutators that he's gotten very very unfortunate set here void reanimator is just ridiculously nasty and because you can, it's very difficult to all clear this map it's just inevitable you're gonna have void reanimator spawning just harassing you indefinitely throughout the course of this mission so we have some Kaidaran Monoliths and they are attempting to try and deal some damage to this train, but this train does not appear to be going down. Time Warp also trapping this one carrier here, which is somewhat unfortunate as well. And now there is another attack wave coming in on the northern rail here. Super Gary is in position, so he's, a few of these Egorbs will be able to clean out a good chunk of his attack waves here. So that's actually really good. A few more roaches still remaining. These spine crawlers should have no problems dealing with it, especially with the improved repair beam upgrade and with the help of Kerax's energizers as well. So that train is actually going to escape, and Kerax has attempted to try and set the train on fire, but that has just been a little bit too late. So now we have double-edged. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh my. So double-edged is very problematic for a commander like Super Gary because his ego orbs just make him explode. And you can see here a lot of Karax's structures are also going to be taking a lot of damage here. And double-edged is going to be really, really nasty. Dealing with this train is going to be very difficult. I think Karax will have his solar lance available. So Karax might be able to use his solar lance to at least deal a little bit of damage to the trains. But this thing is going to be very difficult. And Super Gary, you can see here, just instantly explodes from the double-edged mutator. So... This is going to be somewhat problematic for Karax now. He has to try and deal with this train all by himself. I'm not really sure what his plan is here. And this train is going to be working its way through. And this escort wave is not going to be stopping as well. A few more biles coming down on the rest of Sitman's structures here. Sitman's structures, there is a chrono wave that gets used over here. And these spine crawlers are actually kind of holding their own, which is very, very surprising. But eventually they will end up going down because, yeah, there we go. Some more of these spine crawlers going down right now. Look at the stack speed. And, yeah, these spine crawlers are not actually going to be able to do very much here. And now we have Slim Pickings active. Slim Pickings, not too bad of a mutator, I think. Because both these players have kind of established their economies, they are floating a lot of resources, so this is kind of okay for them. They will eventually take this out with the help of Karax's Solar Lance. And notice how he's gotten his Solar Flare upgrade. Solar Flare is really, really good. Up it's a really good upgrade for Karax, especially on this map, because it allows him to deal damage to multiple train carriages simultaneously. Very, very useful upgrade here for him. There is an attack wave now that is moving, making its way here, and it will start to take out some of Stetman's spine crawlers. And some of these spine crawlers do uproot themselves, but there is just not nearly enough spine crawler to deal with this attack. When these ultralists are just tanking so much of this damage, hydralists from the backline dealing insane amounts of damage. Super Gary is out right now, and he does use his satellite overcharge to try and keep these units alive. And yeah, there are a few losses over here as well. Void reanimators is the next thing to be cycled out, so that'll be kind of nice for these players. Just not having to deal with void reanimators, just annoyingly resurrecting units over here so that is actually really nice so yeah void reanimators is out right now let us take a look at what the next one is temporal field okay that's a really nice mutator They're reasonably easier to deal with than something like void reanimators or void rift so that's actually really nice and now super gary is going to start dealing some more damage to these units and try and soften out this attack wave but unfortunately he gets melted again the satellite overcharge was not enough to keep him alive 
double edged is really, really difficult to deal with in Stedman, especially for for a commander that relies so much on the damage output of Super Gary. He just gets completely melted over here. So it's gonna be a while before Stedman does respawn his Super Gary little robot thing. So double edged is gonna be the next thing that'll cycle out. So that'll be a little bit easier for Stedman to live with. Actually, we can have a look at the. I think we can pull up the Augie's already stats now. I can't pull that up. I kind of wanted to see how much strain damage was being dealt, but because this is a custom map. On the because it's an arcade map that that train damage doesn't actually appear, so that's not problematic. But top train has gone down, middle train needs to go down as well, and I think that should go down. The carriers are dealing a little bit of damage, and the spine crawlers are dealing a lot of damage here with the help of the energizers. Lifty move on this one random energizer from I do not know what. It should be a hybrid somewhere. I do not know where that came from, but there we go. Double aged is gone. Super Gary is now happy again. He is going to be able to start dealing, again, some more damage. We have the Alien Incubation here, which is a little bit annoying, but nothing Super Gary can't handle. He's going to start using his E-Gorbs over here, and these E-Gorbs are just going to increase his skill count by an insane amount. And there we go. So that is actually really well handled. A lot of Spine Crawlers have gone down, but these Spine Crawlers will be able to eventually clear out the rest of these of these broodlings here. Now, do note that spine crawlers are bugged and they do get the best oil upgrade and the best oil stacks. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because I'm not actually sure if it is a bug or if it was intended. It says combat units. Now, technically, the spine crawler in the editor is a unit, so structures are not really concerned. They don't have their own category, so they're technically units in the editor. But I do not know if that is intended by Blizzard or no. And you can actually take advantage of it, because I don't think Blizzard will ever fix the bugs in StarCraft, or in co-op at least, ever again. But, yes, yeah, spine crawlers do get the best oil stacks here. This bottom train now is going to be facing Stetman and a few of the carriers of Kerax, which should be okay. There's no double edge, so it's nothing really they can't handle. So, so far, so good. And now we have another set of Void Reanimators here. Really, again, this is going to be a little bit more... And this is, again, a really diff annoying mutator to deal with, but I think nothing that they cannot handle, because now they have actually a good amount of map vision, and a lot of the units that have been killed off are going to be, like, flowing around here, I think. At least I think the... I think it should not be too bad here. There are a few of these hydralisks here that are also being a little bit annoying, but this train is going to be taken out by the army of spine crawlers. <laughs> Look at the attack speed here. I don't know, you can, you can do the math here. It's 1.85 minus 1.63. So it's like, what, 0 0.2? Oh, it's even more than that. It was it was like, it was it was less than 0 0.2 attacks. It's just insane how fast these spine crawlers can attack with the best oil stacks, plus the Karax Chrono Wave, plus the Energizer buffs. It is pretty, pretty nuts. But yeah, there we go. Void Reanimators over here now. That guy's gonna be a little bit annoying, and Super Gary's gonna have a little bit of a hard time actually focusing this guy down because he's actually surrounded by his buddies, and his buddies of Zerg are going to try and take out Super Gary. But again, the stop train now should be able to get cleared out as well. I think. Oh, we have Life Leech here. This is gonna be a bit of a problem. So, yeah, with the Life Leech mutator, this is going to make these Ultralisks pretty much invincible. And these ultralisks are gonna, you know, they're gonna go down on these on these spine crawlers over here. So Kerax has used his solar lance to take out a good chunk of this attack wave, which is really nice. You can take a look at the total damage that's been dealt by Spirit of Dune and Super Gary here. But these ultralisks now are just gonna steamroll all these spine crawlers because the spine crawlers can't really stop the life leech mutator here. Remember that the ultralisks have a cleave attack, and every single unit they damage counts as life leech. So the life leech, the cleave attack actually helps them a lot when. In, in keeping them alive. And you can see the Ultralisks, as soon as they start fighting a group of units here, they pretty much are just always in the green here. So this train now needs to be taken out, and Kerax is 60 seconds away from being able to use a Solar Lance here. Void Reanimators, it's just going to town and just resurrecting everything over here, and these commanders are trying to deal with this. We have some more Spine Crawlers coming out as well for Stetman to try and take this out. The Chrono Wave is not going to be out for at least one for another 60 seconds, and I think the train is going to end up despawning. Pure Fire Beam getting used over here as well to try and take this train out, and I think there's also a little bit of energy as well. I think Karax is going to try and save it. I think he's going to have enough there is enough damage output available, I know that, to take out this train, because the, the Solar Lance can come down as well and, and take this train out. 
So this is going to be it, I think. This is going to be the last train. Uh, is Garakta going to use the solar lens? Garak's not using the solar lens. Is he going to wait, trying to delay it for the last second over here? And there we go. Yeah, we have some solar lances out. And the train is just going to end up getting taken out here. So I think none of the bonus objectives were done, but all the trains have been cleared. Yeah, no bonus objectives, but all the clearings have been taken out. And that is GG.